Hello everyone and welcome back to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly update, give or take on the miniatures I've been painting for the games we cover here on the channel and I think you're going to be seeing this on a Wednesday. So I used to do these on Thursdays and I started doing them on Mondays. It's all out the window now, this is going to be on a Wednesday and we have quite the eclectic mix and I was going to say as normal but no there is actually new games here this time, stuff I've had sitting for such a long time, finally getting them done so that we have some variety towards the end of the year trying out some new games on the channel. So we do have some Marvel Crisis Protocol to talk about, we have some Battletech, we have some Dead by Daylight, we have some Warcry, and then we have Hellboy the board game, and we have one of the He-Man games. I'll go into more detail once we finally get to that. He's just hot off the press, I just finished him a little while ago. Sadly didn't quite get Skeletor finished in time, I wanted both of them done, but he's going to take a little bit longer, he'll be in the next one. So let's start with the Crisis Protocol, we go from left to right anyway, and in fact we'll swap these around because Electro, is this the right one? Yes, Shocker is the other one. Electro has already been in a battle report featuring the spider Foes slash Sinister Six, so we just need to zoom in on him. And as we zoom in on him, I have to explain once he gets into focus, there we go, I hope, is that I assembled him slightly incorrectly. Also, ironically, he looks a little bit like Skeletor, if you just, like Skeletor at the end of the Dolph Lundgren live action movie, when he has like the horrible golden armor at the end his face kind of looks like that but yeah when I was assembling this his face didn't go on smoothly smoothly looking at it dead on you probably won't be able to notice but if you turn it sideways I've kind of tried to hide it actually from that side I've kind of hidden it pretty well maybe it's this side you can't hide it as well yeah this side you can't although I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up there is a deeper shadow there that's because his mask has not fit smoothly onto like the lower part of his face during assembly and unfortunately it just did not snake in properly and by the time I noticed the super glue was done so it'd be a case of like it'd wreck it if I pulled it off to try again I do think thanks to that part of his mask being black I, I also used the deeper black I used black legion uh, instead of black templar I think that's the deeper black contrast paint to hide it better and I think it did an okay job like if I hadn't pointed that out to you I wouldn't have expected you to really notice. In terms of other colours I wanted him to look a different green compared to Vulture that we talked about last time and Sandman so I used the kind of pale green which is again the one I keep forgetting the name of but it's the one I plan to use for the, the Flesh Beater Quartz for uh, Warhammer Warcry. So it's that one, it's Gut Ripper Flesh, I think. I think it's Gut Ripper Flesh. I vaguely remember that. So it's a bit of a paler green than perhaps Shocker, Electro, whatever. Should have for his costume, but I wanted it to stand out as a different green, so I was limited by what green contrast paints I had. And I felt like if I used Warp Lightning, it'd be too dark. I'm not keen on Warp Lightning as a contrast paint from years back when I used it more often. So I did that, and then I used the... Iron Jaws Yellow, and also used the even brighter yellow, which is Imperial Fist Yellow, for the actual bits of his suit. And I also tried to do a very, very light highlight with some of the Gracier. Oh, as always, everything is based in Gracier. I keep forgetting to mention that in case people are just jumping in and don't know, but I will only really ever mention it if I don't use Gracier, because I use that for everything. Mostly spray painting these days as well, just because I like the smoother finish of a, a good spray paint, opposed to just applying a base coat. But, you know, your, your mileage may vary. So that's all we have to talk about. The base is the usual Crisis Protocol base of Basilicanum Grey with Storm Vermin on top after applying a little bit of... Well, usually I use um, Agrax Earth Shade in the cracks to add a little bit of shadow, but because he's kind of channeling electricity from the grid, I actually just put in some yellow to make it a pretty glowy base. So we didn't really get a good showing for Electro in the first battle report he showed up in because it turns out the Hulkbuster is actually a pretty hard counter to him. So we'll see him again in the future. He seems really powerful though. He, he has a lot of versatility. So I'm looking forward to seeing him again on the table as a loud truck goes past the window. Am I going to have to do a cut until it's finished? I think it's gone. So next we're going to talk about Shadow King. I can't pretend to know anything about Shadow King. Um, I was not familiar with him until he was revealed for this game. He is a, he is a powerful mutant or he's from a different plane of reality and he has this monster inside of him and he's a rival of Professor X because that's who he's bundled with for Crisis Protocol. Don't know him. Cool miniature though. Pretty easy to assemble as well because this is all just one section. Like it's all, I think his hands had to go on and that was it. So he is a pretty cool miniature. 
For a suit, I just used that new white contrast shadow shade thing that Games Workshop released with the newer release wave of contrast paints to just add a little bit of shade onto the grease here to give some definition to the suit. It does make it a little bit darker. If you want to brighten it back up more than I have, uh, a dry brushing of grease here again, or a white paint on top of that just very lightly will bring out the edges a bit better, I think. The standard thing though is definitely the, the Shadow King, I guess, himself which is billowing around him. I kind of made it look like it was affecting the lighting on the metal of the base here. And this is a mix of a bunch of different contrast paints. I, I like having to do blended stuff like this with contrast because if you do it right, it can look real nice. Like contrast paint when it, while it's wet is such a great thing to blend with. So let's see if I can remember. I started with, I think that is just Philippus Pink. If it's not, it's Sigurd Burgundy, Burgundy rather. And then I mixed it into Luxian Purple, just a smidge here to mix it into this part to transition into the blue. And then the blue itself was, is that Frost Heart? That looks a little dark to be Frost Heart. I think that's Talisar Blue. Yeah, I think that is. And that completed the look. Oh, I think the dog's about to bark. One moment, please. Okay, there we go. Hopefully she's not gonna bark again. Uh, just some black for the cane there, some lead belcher silver with non oil for the cuffs and the, whatever that is on his upper forearms, and uh, the same. I think I think that is the burgundy for his fez and also his his silk shirt. Cool miniature, as I say, it's like a, a very dapper uh, East Asian Asian version of Kingpin. That's that's just what he reminds me of. As I say, I've never seen. I don't think he was in the original cartoon. I don't remember him from any of the comics I've read, so not familiar with him at all. I don't know how, how obscure he is, but yeah, cool. Oh yeah, and I added a little bit of the Grey Seer to mix, because he, he has a couple of points on him here where the, the beast, the demon, whatever, is kind of mixing with his suit, because you can kind of see his suit almost looks like it's on fire here, but it's just kind of manifesting. So I added a little bit of white just to make it look like it's carrying some of the color as it goes. And uh, his flesh tone, I just used Gilman flesh, but I applied a double layer to, to give it a different tone. Uh, but that's it, yeah. I, I really like this model. Very, very cool. He's not been on the table yet, so I'll try and get him in a Crisis Broker Battle Report soon. I can't even remember what factions he's in. I think he's just in Criminal Syndicate, weirdly. But who, who knows? Well, he'll definitely get fitted in somewhere. So as not to ramble too much, I don't have much to say about the two mechs I painted for Battletech this week. It's just two more in the Draconis Combine slash House Korea colours. I went into detail last video. Uh, with the two models I painted in the colours there, so if you want details on how to do this, I go into literally every colour I use there. I'm just showing these off as a matter of note. This is a, a Nova I painted in the colour scheme, and I think the other one is called a Warhawk, right? I keep forgetting. I'm, I'm not up on clan mech names or, you know, the Inner Sphere names for the clan mechs, but these I had. this is a spare that I had sitting, and I don't particularly like the design of the, the mech, so I chose that to paint and the Warhawk, if it is a Warhawk, I hope I remember that name, it's a slightly different sculpt to the one that comes in the Alpha Strike starter box because the one in the Alpha Strike starter box it does not have this missile rack on top, it's just it's flat. So slightly different but other than that basically the same design, slightly tilted to the, the upper body, slightly pivoted, that's the only other difference. But yeah, I talked about the colours I used last time but just as a matter of note, there's two done. So, I, pardon me, I technically have now a Lance of House Karira done. So I'll try and get them in there somewhere. <laughs> it's been a little bit since I've played any Battletech. I've been painting more than I've been playing it. But we'll try and get some Alpha Strike on the channel eventually. It's just finding the time uh, for everything that I want to do is, is a little difficult. But there is two additional mechs done. Dropping little bits of grass all over my table. But hey, they're done. So next, for Dead by Daylight, the board game already been in a video and the return to it. Please focus on that camera, thank you. We have the Trickster. I chose to paint the Trickster instead of the Oni because of the unique colours I'd get to use on this guy since he's using such bright colours. Magus Purple for his hair. Um, Volupus Pink, or again, the Volupus Pink or the Burgundy. I never remember which because they're very, very similar. I think it's the Burgundy because that's slightly darker and the same yellow I was talking about just with non oil over the top for his jacket. But as far as Killers for Dead by Daylight goes, definitely stands out because he has such a bright color palette. 
Uh, lead belt of silver for his chains, his necklace, his belt, etc. A little bit of black as well for the, and silver for the throwing knife and whatever his club is. Sadly, my my club was bent in transit when I ordered the game. Yeah, I know you can kind of straighten it out, but from this angle you can't really tell anyway. So that is the first killer in a while I've painted for the Dead by Daylight, the board game. And he was in the collector's edition, so if you have just the base version of the core box, he's not a killer you get. You have to have the collector's edition. But yeah, he he did really, really well. He, he is exceptionally powerful. A little OP, I think, because he doesn't need to hook anybody to win because of his throwing knife mechanic. So... I don't know, maybe against humans instead of solo mode he'd do better, but you can go see the video for that if you want more. Again, trying to not ramble as much during these. So next we have one of the five Gorger Mawpack, I think they're called, which is a warband. It was part of one of the starter boxes or, you know, like year seasonal releases, I don't know what Games Workshop calls them, for Warcry. I didn't pick them up and then later down the line they released them as separate boxes, which is just great for me because I like these guys. I didn't like the other half which was just humans and dogs. It's kind of like, eh, I wouldn't find it fun to paint them. This guy, um, I've had him sitting as my test for a little bit, as in sitting spray painted ready for paint and just had to work up the courage to paint larger models because they can go real bad or real well. Uh, the other four aren't even, well, they're assembled but they're not even base coated yet because I just, this is my test run to see if I like how it turned out. And I do. The same uh, white shade contrast paint I was talking about for Shadow King I used on his skin which is obviously the most uh, of what you see here because they are just giant like pale monstrosities that eat flesh really cool miniatures like the whole world warband only has five miniatures they're huge they have a billion <laughs> wounds and they just look very very cool I hope it's staying in focus hopefully so besides that, there's a lot of skeletal horde for all the bones, blood for the blood god for the blood effects, and flesh terror red for the the thing hiding his shame, and also this one in particular has a thing covering his eyes as well. So same for that. And I had a little bit of blood effect where like he has stuff stuck in him, where people have been trying to kill him, and he's got a, a shackle there as well. So pretty cool. Uh, I added those skulls to his base uh, ages back, year, literally years ago. I bought the Games Workshop box of like, here's a hundred different skulls you can just use to adorn bases. So I looked those out because I still have a, a ton left over. So I, there's a jawbone there. That's an orc skull, and then like a human-ish skull, whatever that is. Just again because it kind of fits their theme. The base is just the AK concrete paint that I've talked many times about. Love it. It's so versatile. You add a paint color on top of it, and you can have dirt, sand, snow. In, I've done so many different textures just with that as the base, it's fantastic stuff. So that was just that plus rattling grime to kind of do like a mountainous, muddy area. Just just to, I felt like it fit the theme and I am actually happy how it turned out. So this is actually one of the smallest out of the five by the way. There's another one that's kind of crouched over that's the same size as this guy and then the other three are all larger. So it's one of those things you just have to work your confidence up when you're doing these larger miniatures. but. Uh, we'll see. I'm not in a rush to put more work around the channel just because I, I, I actually really do prefer Underworlds because there's tactics involved. For Warcry, literally every warband feels the same. Their only difference is their skills you get from rolling the doubles, triples, quads. And if you roll terribly like I do in general, you don't get to see the, the cool abilities that often, the triples and the quads. So I find it very samey. I am surprised it's the more popular of the two games. Warcry is fine but everyone feels the same. It's surely just down to dice rolls. Like, there's very little tactics involved in it. So I much prefer Underworlds, but I'm definitely in the minority there because Underworlds is apparently on life support, whereas Warcry, they're still releasing stuff. Anyway, let's move on a little bit and talk about new stuff. We have from Hellboy the Board Game by Mythic. Not Mythic Games, Mythic. Uh, we have Hellboy himself, we have, I think that's Abe Sapien, I'm not super familiar with Hellboy by the way, so if I use any incorrect terminology, I apologise, but hey, this might be my gateway drug. And then we have three enemies, the core box, I, didn't, I don't have any of the expansions, ages ago, well not that long ago, but like a year and a bit ago, I picked up just the core box, cheap, because I found it in a sale. Uh, there is expansions that add more bosses, more enemies, etc, and more stories, but just in the core box, you get... Three, uh, three of three different types of froglings, frogs, whatever they're called, enemies. These are the super basic ones, so I figured I know I'll need these, so I painted them first. Then there's three of a slightly harder type, three of an even harder type, and then the big boss, and then some spawn puddles 
for them as well. And there is like a technical demon and some uh, cooler stuff in the core box as well. But I'm painting up what I think I need just to kind of get started with it. It's an old game, I'm not expecting it to like be something massively popular or anything. It's just something I've had sitting for a little while, so I'm finally getting around to painting things. Let's start with Hellboy himself. Hopefully getting him in focus. Not Ron Perl Perlman, but whatever. I used two different reds here, Bow Red for his skin tone, but his severed horns and the fist there is Blood Angels Red contrast. For his jacket, I believe I used the Agros Dunes contrast paint, and it's got non oil over the top. Lead Belcher Silver for his gun, and that's really about it. Black for his hair, uh, that was just the Black Legion. And Snake Bite Leather for the assortment of tools on his belt. Pretty cool miniature. I'm kind of happy with how this one turned out. I opted just to use like plain black bases because the the boards the game comes with are, are very like cartoony looking. So I felt like having just the black circles would be fine uh, rather than trying to make them look like anything because you have to either make them look like cobblestone, which isn't going to work on a flat thing like that, or wood. I guess you could technically do the wood paneling effect, but it'd be real difficult. I wouldn't be able to do it. So the black circle is what they're getting. For Abe, I kind of regret not having uh, a different skin tone. It doesn't quite match the official paint job. It's a bit too bright. I use Mantis Warrior Green. This is not focusing, is it? There he goes. Uh, Black Templar for his bulletproof vest. And Rattling Graham for his spear. This, and that's about it. Other than just a wash on top of him. Super simple. Try. I, I, I presume the thing on the back is meant to be bright or white. Didn't really... I couldn't pick it out quite well enough. The logo for the police station I don't know whatever, whatever it is they work for but in terms of tone I kind of wish I'd used the gut rip of flesh that I used on Electro I think that would have been better and would have been closer to the official paint job but oh well I had to make sure he stood out from what I planned to use for the frogs so this is just three of the basic frogs they're all painted the same way that yeah, was super quick this is so that was that was Striking Scorpion, sorry, because this is Mantis Warrior Green, aka the, the Hulk colour I used for Immortal Hulk. And Wildwood for the tatters of their clothing, and then Agrax Earthshade over everything. Super simple, they're not super detailed, they've got one really long foot, I presume that's by design, because they're all like that, but yeah, super simple, just got three of them done. And I guess my next port of call for this will be the next upper three, or maybe I can try and do the spawn puddles, because they're not going to take long. It's just like little spawn pools that they pop out of, I think. But you need them for gameplay purposes. So I think that's probably what I'll do next from this game. But I'm just trying to fit this in. And the player characters, I took a real quick look at the rules and it just said if you're playing solo, play as two characters. So those are the two I picked. No idea if they synergize particularly well, it's just I fancied painting those models because of the opposing colours with the red and the green. So that's the two I've picked that I'll play with. And now it's just a case of getting the enemies painted up that I presume I'll need because it tells you not to look ahead so it's hard to gauge but I know it's going to be frogs because those are the most basic enemies so that's why I'm focusing on them and finally hot off the press he has the power now if you have been paying attention to the unboxings I've done on the channel a little while ago now I did pick up the come on games he-man game I don't remember what the subtitle for that one is this is not from that between then and now uh, I managed to get a deal off of a friend who was selling off the other He-Man game that exists that's by a European company called Archon Studio, I believe, uh, which a friend of mine plays uh, further afield over in Europe, and this is the one he plays. And I picked this one up, and at a glance, in terms of how the, the two of them play, this playstyle kind of appealed to me more because it's got a little bit of underworlds in it in terms of like having these subjective objective cards you can score you have cards you can play but it's still also about dice rolling so the underworld ish the very light underworld tones warhammer underworld is what made me more interested in trying this one first that and also less stuff to paint so I, I'm focusing on this one I never did an unboxing for what I picked up because it, it was second hand it was all fully open I think I got the core box and seasons one through five of evil and seasons one, three and four of good for a hundred quid, which was a, a heck of a deal. So, but it was all opened and like, you know, it was just all sprue and, and the instructions from inside were just in a pile. 
so it wouldn't have been a true unboxing because it wasn't a fresh box so that's why i never showed it off but this is the he-man that comes with that game the marker on the front of all their bases is for gameplay purposes because front facing matters and i wanted to have skeletor here as well as i said at the start he'll be here next time can we zoom in a little bit to see mr he-man the detail on these miniatures is real nice i don't know how it will compare to the come on games I maybe should like try and set aside time to do the He-Man from that, just purely so we can compare the two in terms of like whose miniature is better, cool mini or not indeed, that kind of thing. But you know, He-Man is a barbarian, he's mostly wearing nothing, so he's not hard to paint. It's a lot of Gulliman flesh for his flesh tone, I used Agros Dunes for his loincloth and boots, I used, ooh, what is, it's the orc yellow, the, the flash gets yellow I think for his hair with some non-oil to tone it back a little bit and some, that was Magnadroth Flame Orange. I know it looks red, I don't know how I managed to make it look more red, but I tried to make it look orange, but with the non-oil kind of pulled the tone back and brought out the red somehow. And I added a little bit of shine to the tip of the sword. If you saw the picture of this I posted on Twitter or Blue Sky, I decided to do this after the fact. It's because it looks like he's just finished transforming. So I wanted to add a little bit of, you know, I have the power. So I added a little bit of blue tone with a tiny bit of white on the tip, like the you know the lightning's just struck or finished striking. And yeah, cool mini. I wasn't sure his shield looks like that, but by the way, I couldn't. I found plenty of pictures of the official paint job, but they're all from that angle. <laughs> so I have no idea if like maybe that's meant to be a red or something to make it stand out a bit more. So I've just done a basic shield with um, rattling grime on the interior with Belcher and Null Oil on the outside. But this is the start of a, a miniature to try that game as well. The tutorial game for um, whatever it's called, it's called Battlegrounds I think, is the shorthand for it, but it's like Masters of the Universe Battlegrounds, a He-Man game by Archon Studio. Um, the tutorial game is like three heroes per side, so that isn't too bad and I've already technically got two done, because as I say Skeletor is almost done. So almost got them both, oh you know what, I've just realised, did I even show you the back properly? I never noticed, I forgot to go over those stones at the back there. I can't believe it. That shows you just how recently I finished painting this. I originally did them black because I thought they were part of the rim, but then I noticed in the official paint job there's actually a raised section on the front of the rim here, which is to help denote what the front facing is. So I went, okay, well fine, I've accidentally painted these stones black. I'll go over them in the base coat again and then apply the... <laughs> the uh, what did I use for the base here? I used... I think I used Skeletal Horde. For the base because I didn't want to use the Agros Dunes because I'd used it on his boots so it would look too similar. So I think I used uh, yeah Skeletal Horde and then Non Oil over the top and I forgot to go over the stones after I did the base coat. Well you know what I'm going to do after I finish recording this now? And that as they say is that another two weeks ish of models painted up for the channel. What can you expect next time? Well you can definitely expect Skeletor, hopefully more from that game as well. Hopefully some more frogs from Hellboy the board game. Uh, I can't guarantee anything from Dead by Daylight or more of the uh, Gorgers from Warcry, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't have any mechs sitting to wait being done. I do have a lot of Crisis Protocol releases to get through and Apocalypse is releasing later this month and I want to focus on him because Apocalypse is it's such a cool looking character. I mean, he looks silly with that frog face but he's such a cool mini. So I'm looking forward to him and I still need to get those new Asgardians painted as well. I also have a, a third party miniature to paint up as well. So you might see that, but I'll, beyond that it will just be the, pardon me, why am I so burpy today? Mechs, possibly, if I get around to finding more. I still have a couple sitting here that I could paint up as basically anyone. Uh, it's all clan mechs I'm not particularly fussed about. So yeah, we'll see. Definitely some Crisis Protocol, almost certainly, just because I have so many of them to do. Uh, the most recent ones I have fully assembled are Ben Riley and Gwenum. So good chance of seeing those. If you want to show me what you have been painting yourself for the games you play, you can do so in my Discord or on Twitter or on Blue Sky. I usually link most things below. If you want into the Discord, it, just stop by when I'm streaming on Twitch or my gaming channel and someone or myself will share the Discord link with you and you can drop pictures in to the Discord. That's fine by me. Um, and I hope it helps encourage you to get through your pile of grey shame. It's, it's fun. Just paint stuff up. And hopefully this will be the precursor to seeing some new games on the channel towards the end of the year. Basically once this current season of Fallout Wasteland Warfare finishes, that's when there's now a space in the schedule for either bringing some old games back more often or trying new stuff. So I'm going to mix those two together depending on what's painted. Anyway, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next time. Ta-da for now.